Now, the next thing that I would like to talk about in this section is what we call as the discriminant, and we're going to try and use the discriminant to help us determine how many solutions we are going to have and what type of solution it is going to be. Uh, so before we t uh, talk about that, let's see what exactly do we mean by a discriminant. Now, when you're talking about the solutions of a quadratic equation, you know, equation in the standard form, which is ax squared plus bx plus c equals 0, we can use the quadratic formula to come up with those equations. Now, in your quadratic formula, the um, value that you have inside the um, radical symbol here, or inside the square root, the expression, which is b squared minus 4ac, just what you have here, that is what we call as the discriminant. And it's called that because it helps us distinguish among the three types of solutions. Basically, are you going to end up with a rational solution? Are you going to end up with a irrational solution? Or are you going to end up with an imaginary solution? Okay, so this discriminant is basically what helps us determine what sort of solutions to expect. So let's go ahead and look at that. Okay, so again, remember your discriminant is the b squared minus 4ac expression, and you can use, you know, the same a, b, and c values from your quadratic equation to help you out and figure out the number of solutions and what type of solution you are going to have. So let's go ahead and look at um, what the discriminant value will be and what that tells us about our solutions. So let's say if you have a positive number in your dis as your discriminant for the b squared minus 4ac, and that number in your discriminant is a positive number and it is a square of an integer, something like 4, 9, 25, that tells us if you end up with that sort of a discriminant that you are going to end up with two solutions and they're going to be rational numbers. So you end up with two rational solutions. Now let's say your discriminant is a positive number, but it is not the square of an integer. Okay, so it's not a perfect square. In that case, you will end up with two solutions, but they will be irrational numbers. So you end up with two irrational solutions. So if they're positive and have a square, and it, it is a square of an integer, two rational solutions, positive but not the square of an integer, you end up with two irrational solutions. Now also, there's a possibility that your discriminant could be zero. In that case, if your discriminant is zero, you will end up with only one rational solution because that whole radical section will disappear. So think about it. If b squared minus 4ac, which is your discriminant, is zero, square root of zero is zero, so this whole term will disappear, and you will be left only with negative b over 2a, and so that's why you will have only one rational solution. And of course, if your discriminant is negative, which means your uh, square root will have a negative number inside of it, and that tells you that you will have two imaginary solutions, and that's what we looked at at one of the examples earlier. So this is basically how you will determine how many solutions you're going to have and what type of solutions they are going to be. So we'll use this information to help us out here in these examples. All we're trying to do is we're not trying to solve these. We just want to use the discriminant to try and determine whether we're going to have two rational solutions, one rational solution, uh, two irrational solutions, or two imaginary solutions. So what kind of a uh, solution can we expect? So for your discriminant, again, remember b squared minus 4ac, which is the value under your square root, that's your discriminant, we're trying to see what we are going to end up with here. So go ahead and plug in your b, uh, a, and c in here. Again, remember, uh, your a is the coefficient in the squared term, so your a will be 25. Okay, your c is going to be the constant term, which is 49 and b is going to be the term on the first degree uh, variable, which is x, so your b square will be 70 square. And let's go ahead and solve this, 70 square minus 4 times 25 times 49. 
and see what exactly are we going to end up with. So this will give you uh, 70 square will give you 4900 okay 4 times 25 gives you 100 100 times 49 also gives you 4900 and as you can see 4900 minus 4900 gives us 0 so what happens when you have a 0 discriminant let's see in our little table here we said when our discriminant was equal to 0 that told us that we are going to have just one rational solution so for our example first here you will have just one rational solution okay so again remember we're not trying to solve this we're just trying to determine what sort of solutions we may expect okay let's take a look at another example Right, let's say we have x squared plus 4x plus 2 equals 0. Okay, again, we're trying to find out using the discriminant what type of solution and how many we are going to have. So b squared minus 4ac. Again, your b squared will be 4 squared minus 4 times a. a is going to be 1 and c is going to be the constant 2. So 4 square of course gives us 16 minus 4 twos are 8. 16 minus 8 will give us 8. Now you need to try and decide uh, of course you can see that this is a positive solution. Now is 8 the square of an integer or is 8 not the square of an integer? And as we know, 8 is not the square of an integer, so what does that tell us about the solutions? So your solutions is uh, when you have a positive and not the square of an integer as your discriminant, you will end up with two irrational solutions. Okay, so you end up with... Okay, we'll look at a couple more examples here. How about something of this form? You have 3x squared equals 5x plus 2. So again, right off the bat, you can see that this is not in the standard form. So that's the first thing you want to do is try and write that in the standard form. So bring your 5x and 2 over to this side and you will end up with 3x squared minus 5x minus 2 equals 0. When you bring them to the other side they'll both become negative and now we're ready to find our discriminant. b squared minus 4ac so b squared will be negative 5 squared Okay, minus 4 times a, which is 3. c will be negative 2. And let's see what do we end up with. Negative 5 squared, of course, is 25. Uh, you have 4 times 3, which is 12. 12 times negative 2 will give us negative 24. Negative 24, and this negative will become a positive 24. And of course, you can see 25 plus 24 will give you 49. Okay, 49, you can see it's a positive number and it is the square of the number 7. So when you have a positive and a square of an integer, you can see from our list here that you will end up with two rational solutions. So in this case, we can expect to see two rational numbers. Alright, we'll go ahead and take a look at one more example. And this time you have 3m squared 
minus 10m plus 15 equals 0. So this is in the standard form, so we're ready to find our discriminant. b squared minus 4ac, your b will be negative 10 squared minus 4 times a, a is going to be 3 and c is going to be 15. So let's see, negative 10 squared will of course give us 100 and what will 12 times 15 give us? So uh, let's go ahead and figure that out. All right, let's see. 4 times 3 gives us 12, and 12 into 15 will give us 10. One eighty. Okay. So of course you can see you're subtracting uh, one eighty from one hundred, so you end up with negative eighty as your solution. And since you end up with the negative number, we saw that earlier. When you have a negative discriminant, you end up with two imaginary solutions. So of course we know we're going to end up with two. imaginary solutions. Okay? Alrighty, for the next part what we want to do here is just try and use that same idea of the discriminants to help us out, but we're going to look at, look at it with a different approach. Now as you can see here, we are given 9x squared minus 30x plus c. So we're not given the constant term. Now we want to try and find the value of the missing a, b, or c so that each of the equations will have exactly one rational solution. Now when do you have one rational solution? We'll look at our table again. The only time you end up with one rational solution is when your discriminant is equal to zero. So we will use that information to help us out with these sets of examples here. So to find the one rational solution, b squared minus 4ac has to equal zero. Okay? What you will do is you will look at your equation and identify your a and b and then that will help us find the c. So your b squared, your b is going to be negative 30 minus 4 times a, a is going to be 9, and of course we don't know what c is, so that will be our unknown variable, okay? Negative 30 square will of course give us 900, 4 times 9 will give us um, 36, and you're left with 36 C equals 0. So 900 minus 36 equal 36 C equals 0. Now what we need to do is take our variable term on one side and take our constant term on the other side, just like if you were trying to solve for any unknown variable. So we'll start by moving our 36 C over to the other side. And you're left with 900 equals 36 times C. We'll divide both sides by 36 okay, so that we can isolate our C itself. And now we need to try and figure out what is 900 divided by 36. And that should give you 25 as your answer. So the idea is if your equation is 9x squared minus 30x plus 25, then you will end up with only one rational solution as your uh, answer to this equation. Let's look at one more example with this. 
you have r square minus br plus 49. So of course you can see we don't have our uh, coefficient on the uh, first degree term. You have a b there. So again you're doing the same thing. You take your discriminant, set it equal to 0. Okay, go ahead and substitute your values. Now b is unknown, so of course we don't know what b square will be. 4 times a, a is the coefficient on the squared term, so that's going to be 1. C is the constant term, so that's 49. And let's go ahead and see what's 4 times 49, and that will give you 196. Okay, now just like we did earlier, we'll take our 196 over to the other side and let the B square be by itself. And you will end up with B square equals 196. Now, of course, you will just apply your uh, square root here and try and figure out the answer. So when you take the square roots, you will end up with B equals plus or minus, because again, you can have a positive or a negative root. What is square root of 196? When you do that, it will be 14. Okay, so we are saying B can be either positive 14 or B can be negative 14 and you will end up with uh, exactly one rational solution when B equals either any of these two values. So in this case you end up with two different values. Okay, And that will be true anytime you're trying to find B because of this B square in your discriminant. Okay. Now anytime you're working with these uh, quadratic equations, it's always a good idea to try and use the discriminant to help you determine what type of solutions you have so that uh, when you actually solve the equation, you know what you're looking for. Okay, And that will be the end of section 11.3.